The HP Spectre X360 is something that I wish was available when I bought my first ever Windows laptop. This is a laptop that not only has great build quality, a fantastic OLED display, and a dedicated GPU, but it has power efficiency and upward facing speakers, as well as an incredible audio experience for the person on the other side of your video call. Having the Poly Studio microphone built in means that you have external microphone level quality audio built right into your laptop. Now we're gonna cruise through all of the ins and outs of this laptop throughout this video, getting into the efficiency, battery life, and performance benchmarks. So definitely hang on for the whole video. Now, first and foremost, when I unboxed this laptop, it was really nice to see HP take a step up for their premium lineup, the Spectre series. They had a nice minimal packaging, well thought out placement of the pen, charger, and the charger they included was the 140 watt charger block. So not too big, keeps you on the go friendly. A pen is included with the model that I received, but just make sure to double check the description when you're purchasing to make sure a pen comes with yours. Now looking at the weight and thickness of this laptop by itself, it is a nice thin and light on the go friendly laptop. Now, when you go ahead and you add the charger on top, you're gonna to add a little bit of weight, but not too much. Now for this year's model, they've gone away from the black and gold, and they've gone for more of this blue silver color. You can see there's even a little bit of blue reflection in the logo for the HP on top of the Spectre. Now looking at the build quality assembly, I like the rounded edges on the outside of the Spectre X360. You can see that the bottom cover fits into the side panels nicely. And right here is where you're gonna have really good audio experience coming out. No longer do the speakers go out the bottom of the laptop, they come out the front. And I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample so you can hear what that sounds like for yourself. And while we're talking about the Poly Studio, let's drop a quick sample of the webcam on the top bezel so you can hear what that sounds like and looks like for yourself as well. This is the webcam on the HP Spectre X360 16 inch from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. If you're wanting to turn on and off the webcam, there's actually a manual slide that goes across the camera, but instead of it being a slider on top of the screen, you actually just click a button on the keyboard deck and that manually slides in front of it internally. Pretty neat feature. Now the question is how much is all of this going to cost you? Let's go ahead and take a look at the purchasing options for the HP Spectre X360 16 inch model. You can start out with the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H that'll put you at $1599 and that comes with 16 gigs of RAM. But keep in mind that is not the OLED display version that I am currently reviewing. So if you want to go ahead get the OLED display version. You can actually upgrade that by doing clicking here. You're going to actually have to move this over here and that'll put you at 1749. But keep in mind, the model I'm reviewing comes with the RTX 4050. So you can either go ahead and just opt for 32 gigs of RAM, which if you're using Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, this would be a great choice. You can go ahead and skip out on the RTX 4050. I really just recommend this for somebody who's doing video editing, or maybe some light 3D modeling or motion design, that's where the RTX 4050 would be very effective. But honestly, I think this would be a great buy with just the 32 gigs of RAM. However, if you wanna get the model that I'm reviewing, I have the 16 gigs of RAM with the RTX 4050 and the OLED display puts you in at 1989. And then also you can top it off with 32 gigs of RAM and uh, one terabyte SSD if you're interested. However, they do have the model available at bestbuy.com right now. So if you go over to bestbuy.com, you can actually see that the HP Spectre X360 with 32 gigs of RAM and the RTX 4050 is $2199. Now you can actually get it for a little bit less money on HP's website, $2059. So keep in mind that if you wanna go ahead and get it from HP's website, you'll get a little bit better price compared to Best Buy. If you're curious about the live pricing and availability, you can head down in the description below and click those links. And of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now I got a little bit ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the connectivity on the HP Spectre X360. You can see we have a USB type A on the left side panel, no ports along the back side, and on the right side panel, we have a USB type C and an HDMI. 
Now keep in mind, there's also hidden ports, you know, somewhat hidden on each of these back corners. We have a headphone jack on the left side and another USB type C on the right side. Now it's good we have additional USB C's because this is charged via USB type C. Now going ahead and opening the laptop can be done easily with one hand. It's a little bit of a hard start, but then once you get going, it opens up smoothly. But as you can see, the hinge is a little stiff. So as you get near the end of the opening process, it kind of kicks up a little bit. However, that is nice because watch the screen bounce here. I'm gonna hold it there. So it is stiff as you get up near the top there. You can almost like spin the laptop around. And if I hold it and go ahead and let go, you can see it stops almost immediately. So there's very little screen bounce on this laptop. So let's say you're on a boat, on a boat. Let's say you're on a plane, uh, you're in a car or you're on a train and you, you know, it's moving a little bit. You can see I'm moving my desk and it has very little screen shake compared to some other laptops that actually start to bounce with that sort of movement. Now that we're taking a look at the interior of the laptop, let's dive into the screen. The HP Spectre X360 16 inch model comes with a 2.8K OLED display, 2880 by 1800 resolution, can reach 449 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.11. Now this laptop does come with a pen and let's check out the functionality of that pen. So using the pen on the HP Spectre X360, it comes with a pen. You can see you slide this open to charge it right there, which is really nice. Um, but let's go ahead and test it out here on the screen and check its sensitivity. Here we go, zoom in, zoom out, pretty responsive there. Right now we are on power saver mode. Um, let's stay on power saver mode for just a minute to see how responsive it is with the pen. So I'm going to slide over here, grab my brush tool, and even on power saving mode, seems to be very responsive. You can see a little bit of screen bounce and I'm not touching the screen, but I'm going to give a nice push into the screen. And you can see that the screen does not move. So very nice, secure hinge that doesn't move down. So you don't have to sit here and hold it while you are in this mode. If you want to make sure you have access to your shortcuts, I can even push my screen back a little bit, make it a little bit more comfortable and draw on the screen here. Very responsive, nice light touches, and then some thicker, heavier lines. And it's a, it's a nice setup. It very much acts like an easel. It's not something you're having to hold up. Now, let's say we wanna go ahead and flip it over and turn it into drawing mode. Go ahead and flip this over. Now you again, at this point, would not have access to your shortcuts, which I personally don't like because it's nice to be able to switch brushes around. But as you can see, you know, you lose out on your Command Z. So I'd have to go ahead and grab my eraser here. See, I actually don't even have access to my keyboard at this point. I'm on the back side and I'm trying to use my keyboard and it locks it off. So personally, I really don't like the uh, tablet mode because it loses a lot of control. This is good for like viewing videos or showing presentations. But what I really do like about this laptop is that in regular laptop mode, the hinge is nice and secure. So you can easily access your command Z if I wanna back up all these changes that I've made and I can use the pen very comfortably. So great setup in regards to the pen, the sensitivity, the hinge stiffness, um, very happy with this. Um, even compared to something like the Samsung Galaxy Book for Pro 360, which I will do a full head-to-head -head review on, I'm liking this experience better. All right, moving our focus towards the keyboard deck. We do have a power button that doubles as a fingerprint reader, full-size keyboard, full-size shift keys on both the right and the left, upward-facing speakers for a great audio experience, which we give you a tour of, and this massive trackpad, which is a haptic trackpad. I must say, this is a very well-done haptic trackpad. The click and touch sensitivity is great. I'm able to click and drag very easily. There's no glitchiness. There's only a little bit of confusion when I go to right click. As you can see there, I go to right click and then drag, and it kind of lags because it's like, wait, are you right clicking or are you trying to drag? So keep in mind that if you're going to do a dragging motion, you wanna make sure you're on the left side, the left click of the trackpad, and then you can drag very easily. Um, if you go ahead and try and right click and then drag, it gets a little confused. It's like, wait, what are you trying to do? So just keep that in mind, make sure you're on the right, correct side of the trackpad. But because it's a haptic trackpad, all secured very well to the chassis, really solid build. I think that's what stands out to me most about this laptop is it feels very sturdy. Going ahead and looking at the uh, chassis flex, you can see there's no chassis flex on the laptop 
good and thin, well assembled. All right, looking at the keyboard, we have a medium key travel here. It's very reminiscent of the HP Envy keyboard. That is one thing that really stands out to me. I like the key travel. It's nice and quiet under my fingers, very confident snapback. So it's a great keyboard. Now, two things I wanna point out as we're nearing the performance benchmarks in this video. First thing would be that there is no upgrade path on this laptop. Whether you're looking to upgrade the RAM or the storage, it is not possible on this laptop. Just keep that in mind. Now, you will have access to the Wi-Fi card and the battery. So if you ever need to make any changes there, those are available to you, but the RAM and storage is not. Now, another thing that's very important regarding this laptop, if you do make a purchase, is to go into the My HP Command Center and review your performance controls. If your laptop is set to anything like cool or bounced or smart sense, you will not get top performance out of this laptop. I was quite surprised to see the difference in performance between these two settings. For the 4K export, I was able to get a two minute and 37 second export of a nine minute project out of Premiere Pro. However, that was on performance mode. When I put it into smart sense mode, that same export took 22 minutes and 10 seconds. So it makes a big difference whether you're set to performance mode or smart sense. So if you buy this laptop and you're like, Ben, this laptop's performance is awful. It's most likely because you gotta go to the My HP Control Center and change your performance mode to performance. All right, now let's dive into the full benchmarks here. Now with that awesome disclaimer out of the way so you get full performance out of your laptop. All right, looking at the simulated benchmarks, we're taking a look at Geekbench and Cinebench R23. And as you can see, this laptop holds its own for the simulated benchmarks. Now, as you move into Photoshop, we're using the brand new Puget Systems Creator Photoshop benchmark. You can see it gets third place amongst the other laptops in its category. Really nice score out of this laptop, especially at 16 gigs of RAM, but you can upgrade it to 32. Remember, if you wanna get more ceiling, get better performance inside of something like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, definitely recommend considering that upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM. Now, moving on to video editing, looking at dropped frames, you can see 1080p, 4K full quality playback, zero drop frames. When you unplug from the charger, you lose a little bit of that performance. It throttles a little bit with 221 drop frames. And also because of that dedicated GPU, the RTX 4050, we're seeing about 5,000 drop frames for 6K. So this laptop could get away with some 6K video editing. For me, this would not be my top recommendation. However, for the build quality and efficiency that we're seeing here with this laptop, I would say it could be a great pick for your needs if you're not a full-time dedicated 6K video editor. So just keep that in mind. Now looking at the export time out of Premiere Pro, two minutes and 37 seconds, one of the best export times out of the ultra book category. Really great export time for 4K video editing. I highly recommend this laptop if you want a very well-built laptop with solid performance for 4K video editing. Now the various export times prove that this would be an even better 1080p video editor. You can export a nine minute 1080p clip in 47 seconds. So very quick laptop, super great performance, very exciting. Now without a doubt, what makes this laptop really stand out? It's a 16 inch laptop with a dedicated GPU and fantastic performance for video editors, photographers, designers, and artists is going to be that battery life. We saw 11 hours and two minutes of streaming video playback. 10 hours and 38 minutes of productivity, seven hours and 17 minutes of Photoshop work, and three hours and 42 minutes of video editing playback. So this laptop is very well optimized to not only provide you great performance, but on the go friendly. And so it's really amazing to see those two worlds collide with the latest Intel Core Ultra 7 155H inside of the laptop and how well it was optimized in tandem with the G4, with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 GPU. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more head-to-head -head reviews to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you here in the next video.